Okay. Surface integral. So if we have a surface here, we just like your line integral, we divide this whole surface into area elements dA. Okay, this area, this area element dA, okay, is defined by is is dependent on or the the way that we represent dA as well as dL will depend on how we represent how uh, what the what the coordinate system we have now. Okay. Now for uh, if we in terms of Cartesian coordinate system, we usually define dA uh, depends on the uh, the 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 it depends on the projection of the uh, this this uh, infinitesimal area uh, with respect to this surface. Okay, now. The form of this surface integral would be, again, given your vector function V, which is a function of, let's say, Cartesian coordinate system X, Y, and Z. Okay, so if this is your vector function, Okay, the surface integral will be uh, the integral of the dot product between V and the area element D. It's important to note that this element area 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 element D A is actually the infinitesimal area of this area. Now this arrow represents the area element vector, wherein the vector, this vector, is perpendicular to the surface. Okay? Uh, the surface, the surface, usually, just to add on to the notation, we usually use capital S at the bottom of the integral to indicate that this, this is indeed the uh, uh, a surface integral. Okay, so this, uh, this expression uh, expresses the integral over a specific surface area S. Okay, so it depends on the boundaries of the surface the uh, uh, what you were going to write on the limits of integration at the minimum okay or uh, at the minimum a surface integral is actually a double integral because you are integrating in two dimensions okay by convention the direction of the area element is outward and that is a positive Okay, so that the other side, uh, because uh, because in, with respect to this area element, there are this area vector or the vector perpendicular to the surface uh, can be expressed two ways. One in this way, and the other one in this way, below this surface. So by default or by convention. Uh, when you see outward is that if the surface, or for example, if the surface is like this and the area element is here, the area vector is outward because the curvature of the surface is here by, by convention. Okay, so this is your area element. Okay, now if this is an, if the, uh, for example, let's say, uh, if V, okay, if V describes the flow of a fluid, okay, if V is described as flow of a fluid, so that means it is mass per unit area per unit time, then the surface integral explains the total mass per unit time passing through the surface. Sometimes we call this the flux. Okay, and in our class, in this module at least, one of the one of the examples or one of the application of the surface integral is when 
we use Gauss's law. Okay, because Gauss's law pertains to what we call the electric flux. Okay, and you're already familiar with the integral form of Gauss's law. Integral form of the Gauss's law is the closed integral of E, the electric field, dot dA, and that is equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon sub zero. So this is a, what we call a, this is a closed surface integral. So we are integrating this integ the, the surface that we're talking about when we see this uh, when we see this uh, symbol is that the surface integral is done over a closed surface. Okay, and if this is non-zero, that means that closed surface we call the closed surface the Gaussian surface. We are sure that inside that Gaussian surface there is a net charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So that's Gauss law. We also, uh, we can also, we, we will also uh, uh, use surface integral when we deal with magnetic flux. Okay, which is equal to the uh, integral of B dot TA. Okay, it can be closed or it can be an open surface integral. 